we're going to talk about the slap heard around the world uh, at the Oscars, uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> That was, a, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here, uh-oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Will Smith just smacked the out of me. He's the wife's name out your mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane jump. Keep my wife's name no! I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so a lot of people will say this is staged, and Mark, you're going to cover a lot of stuff around staging, but what I will tell you is you look for signs of fight or flight, and if you look at Will Smith in the beginning, let's, well, let's take a step back. If you look at Jada Pinkett Smith, when the joke is delivered, you'll notice that she's not pleased, and when you're in a relationship, you pick up on those signals. Now, what we didn't see is him change, you know, we didn't see him looking at her. That doesn't mean he didn't see her at the corner of his eye, we can't tell where that happened, but she rolled her eyes, she showed displeasure, and then suddenly he gets up and starts to move. Chris Rock, one point that is important is he probably was a funny guy's whole life, not just on stage. And if he's been a funny guy's whole life, then he probably uses humor to diffuse situations. And that comes up in the play. Um, as he's walking up, if you notice Will Smith's demonstrative body language, he's walking up as if he's angry. He looks wooden and then he walks up and he slaps. Now I'll tell you this, in my career, at working at Sear, we would use a slap to the face as, a, as an insult, one of the most powerful insults you can do to a man. Don't know if that was Will Smith's plan, no idea, but as he goes up and he strikes him, people will also say that Chris Rock, who was standing there, didn't put his hands up to guard himself. Well, how often do people charge this stage in the Oscars, especially a nominee, to come up and injure you? So I don't think that's anything to make it look like it's staged. When he does slap him, if you look at photos, you'll see his face is wrenched off to the side. And then as Will Smith turns around, you'll see anger in his face, drawn sides of his mouth. His eyes are focused pretty hard. And then when he walks back and sits down, he has a he has a chin jut and his teeth are exposed. His eyes are set steely and hard and narrow as he's screaming at him. And he's enunciating that cadence slowly to drive his point home. You'll see all of that. All that is pre-violence and fight or flight. You can't miss it. If you see that in a person, you probably are close to them doing something to you. Now, what's going through his head? Don't know. Can't read his mind. Can see that something was enough of a stimulus to cause him to go and do this. And then later we'll talk about his apology if we get to that. But this is about him walking up to do this behavior in response to a stimulus, in my opinion. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so definitely a real slap, not staged. The big indicator for me, having staged fight after fight after fight, the main thing you have to get, the key thing is eye contact between the two people in the fight. And if you don't have eye contact, it goes badly, badly wrong. And in a staged fight, even if it's a slap, if, if the palm hits the temple here, somebody gets knocked out, they hit their head on the ground or a piece of scaffold or so, and now we're, we're all in hospital. And it's a terrible disaster. So if it had been staged, that would have been sorted out. Also, we would see somebody's hand come up to take the slap or somebody's hand come down to their thigh to make the slap sound. You would never hit somebody on stage. It's just too dangerous. Too many people have had accidents or even died in that situation. So in, in a theater or in film, you don't make contact. You just don't have to. There's no reason for it. Because also what you do at the end of it is you sell it. You make a big deal of the impact of it. And there isn't a big deal on the impact made here. You make a big deal on the impact because you want people to forget about the slap moment. So they forget that they didn't really see anything truly make contact. So real slap really happened. Uh, so Rock, normally he's big and demonstrative. He lands that joke. He sees 
in Jada Smith that uh, that it doesn't have the effect and with the audience that he wanted because we get in Jada bitter taste in the mouth, disgust, eye roll. She targets with her eyes as well. She clamps down her hands and suppresses. So it's dislike, contempt, disagreement, anger and suppression. Bad combination. He knows it's gone badly because we get some word salad from him. I can't quite work out what he's saying before uh-oh. And the uh-oh means he knows something bad is about to happen or it's not going as intended. We've already seen him minimize. I believe that's why he puts his hands behind his back and lowers his head. Yes, he does step forward over that white line, but I think that's somewhat to take some territory, maybe, but also to get closer to see what's coming towards him. But he's minimized uh, there and lowered his eye contact because he's trying to de-escalate what's coming towards him. Uh, Smith comes in, a lot of velocity. Uh, I don't quite think, well, look, what we're missing out on is that moment where uh, Will Smith, because he's laughing at, at, at the joke, uh, he's laughing along with other people or just along with the event or maybe doesn't understand the joke or maybe actually finds the joke funny. I don't know which one it is, but certainly he's truly laughing at it. We've got to expect he then clocks his wife, realize this is this is bad. He's laughed at a joke that's affected her. She has seen that. And the rest of the world has potentially seen that. And my guess is he get tri gets triggered in, what am I going to do now? He doesn't have a plan. So up he gets, full velocity in there. I think the slap is a kind of a last minute idea, last second idea, because he comes off balance. And then as he walks away, we see that he adapts a couple of times on his waistcoat. I think he's unsure about whether he did a good thing, the right thing, whether what, how it's worked for him. I think he's totally mystified himself by what's what's gone on here. Uh, so, uh, Rock is frozen um, again, still minimised, um, and Smith sits down. He's got glossy eyes, uh, some almost tears there, emotional sadness, anger. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o next to him, pleasure, laughing, but then there's shock or fear, sadness, concern. It's it's a it's a complete uh, car crash uh, situation. What I love in the speech afterwards is that in, he then put it down to a battle between God and the devil, which is a fantastic piece of spin, uh, piece of genius. Chase, what do you got on this one? Yeah, I agree with you guys. And, and Chris has been an entertainer his entire life, decades on stage, dealing with hecklers and all kinds of uh, having to improv a ton. And there's one moment in here, we see him stomp with his left foot. And you can see it in the video. And then people are saying that this is him bracing or this is him accentuating or, or kind of getting dominant behavior. But he's been doing this stomp since his first performance that I was able to find in 1994. So this is a, a common behavior of his. So let's look past it for a second. His arms behind his back, I think, are a a way to be dressed down. You'll see this in high ranking military officers and you'll see it in the lowest people in the military. So when you're in trouble in the military, somebody's really tearing into you, that's what you do. Your hands go behind your back. You might lean forward to take it and you might put your head down. So that I think is, is what's going here uh, is what's going on here. And when he's leaning forward, I think it's either a, the lights because the lights up on that stage have to be blinding uh, at that point. They have to be super bright where he's probably having trouble seeing what's ahead. And the second, if you ever spend time, I know uh, Mark and I both do, and you guys probably do. I spend a lot of time wearing a lapel mic in front of lots of people. And if somebody starts walking towards me, if I'm in the middle of speaking or if I'm in the middle of presenting, I'm going to lean towards them because I want my ear to have the most distance from that lapel mic as I possibly can. So I that's an automatic behavior for me is leaning away from that mic. So I think that might be one of the reasons there. But there's genuine this upward defensive movement of his arms uh, right when he's slapped. And it's not a moving back like I was injured. It's I need to protect myself, which is another one for me that says it's not fake at all. But this is also paired with a dominant foot retreat. The moment that Chris Rock is slapped in the face, his dominant foot 
retreats, which is a fighting behavior. He's getting ready to fight. So let's talk about Smith really quick. Smith shows some clear pre-violence indicators. There is a direct line of approach. His arm swing gets shorter and tighter at the closer he gets to Chris Rock. He's completely avoiding of eye contact. And right after the slap, Smith performs this behavior called threat checking. So this is holding for a moment just to ensure there's not going to be some retaliation. And he does it for a, a quarter of a second there. And you can see that when we go through gunfighting training and stuff like that, we they teach us not to do that. They teach us to shoot and then move as fast as you possibly can. That's exactly what they call that military threat checking. You can go uh, call it whatever you like. Finally, the one thing I haven't heard yet uh, on this video is the smirk. If you go back to any episode, people are saying he walks away with a smirk, so it had to be faked. Go back to any episode of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Go watch the movie Men in Black. This is the same face he made in these episodes when he got away with something or he did something dangerous. So those facial expressions were how he lived his life reacting to scenarios before the Fresh Prince even existed. So his acting is based off of how he responds to scenarios genuinely. So there's also one more piece of data here. There are videos of him slapping people that he was pissed off at in the past. So he using slaps as a dis, disciplinary behavior is kind of a baseline for him. I don't think it was staged at all. Scott? Uh, you guys have covered pretty much everything, but so I'll go quick on these. Uh, I think that laugh at the top is the, the when he's when – Will gets up and starts walking toward Chris. It's that obligatory, obligatory, you know, laugh, the ha, ha, ha. He's always doing that laugh anyway. And when he gets close enough, I think I see that stop, but I see that more as a, as a hand slap on, you know, on the knee. You know, you go, ah, oh, it's funny or something, something showing him that that's, that he thinks it's funny and he's ready to, to, to go along with this bit that's whatever it's going to be, it's going to happen. I don't think he thought he was going to slap it when he walked up there because I think that his, his head is down and I think he either sucker punched him. And he, if he knew he was going to do it, he sucker punched him because I think he's looking all the way down. He's got his head down as you would in pre-violence. He's walking the way you would in pre-violence. His, his arms are at his sides, arms at Kimbo as he goes up. There's that long stride and the, the arms are out and they're, they're, the long uh, stroller wave of the arms. And then when he gets up there, that thing comes out quick, comes out quick. And I think Chris Rock sticks his face out there because he's pretending I'm ready for whatever the bit's going to be. And he doesn't realize he's going to slap him. And I've, not the more I watch this, the more I'm not sure Will thought he was going to slap him either. I thought he was going to go up there and say something or or put his hands on him or something, but ended up slapping him. Um, so right after the slap, you're 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 right, Chase. He goes, he gets right on balance on that dominant foot, and his arm goes back like he's getting ready to start fighting too. It's almost that duck duck and you know protect and get ready to fight. And th that's another thing we we teach and show too when we talk about pre violence. And things that happen once somebody gets tagged or or hit like that. That's another thing we talk about. Um, and his and yeah, his speed it, it grows as he gets closer. But I don't think he was on balance enough. His weight does go back, or Will's weight does go back to his right foot before he smacks him. But it happens so quickly. That's why I think as well, it's a sucker punch or just hit him. I'm I'm going to slap this guy. So I think he might have lost his temper then. And then, but Chris Rock shows unbelievable unbelievable emotional control over this. I mean, that is the high end. I've been around the block 40 times because when he smacked him, nothing changed. He didn't say, oh, wow. But then he got right back up like a pro would. I think he did it totally professionally. I got up there and took his, the, the what I call royalty arms, where you have your arms behind your back like that. The roy royalty does that when they walk around and talk to you. It makes them uh, seem... Um, I'd say, sorry, Mark, but it makes them seem like they're better than everyone else when, when they do that. So that's why I was referred to that as royalty arms. Um, then th after that, that's when uh, Will turns around and walk back. He does do that smirk. I, I wasn't aware of the. I never watched those Will Smith things, so I don't. I'm not familiar with that face. But it was that that little smirk. But that, so it looks like a little panic smirk at the same time. So it might be the same thing. Whether and I think he hadn't made his, the decision yet whether he's done something right or wrong. He just knows he's done something out of anger. 
at that point. Then when he's walking back, you're right, he goes down here, or Will Smith uh, goes down here and he's pulling on his shirt, but he's got his big arm swinging like that. It reminded me of Stir Crazy when uh, Richard Pryor is, is walking through the prison trying to act all tough and stuff and trying to act extra tough. He swings his arm and he walks just like that. Go look it up. It's uh, Stir Crazy, Richard Pryor uh, in prison. Really, really funny stuff. Um, and then, uh, let's see what we got. Y'all have been trying to get up with stuff y'all haven't done yet. I got something from a comedic perspective. When at, after uh, he gets slapped and Will goes and sits down, we've been over the Jada stuff. Um, he says, Oh, I could like he's going to say something. No! I'm going to, okay? <laughs> oh, I could, oh, okay. And let me tell you, those comedians that have been around, they've been comedians longer than they've, they've not been comedians. They've been on the earth that long. He could have lit him up and said something horrible just about his wife and about him, all that stuff. He could have lit him up, but he didn't do it because I think he's a pro. And I, I, I think that showed, that showed a lot of self-control there, more obviously than Will Smith has. And I think it was real as well. I'll go along with that. You guys have covered everything, but I'll, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it's real as well. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh. Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked out of me. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane joke. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. So let's go around the room and talk about what we've seen and, and what we think about that real quick. Just sum it up in 30 seconds or like less. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so I think great example of somebody getting triggered by uh, looking at his partner there, uh, transitions from one feeling to another, not in control of that moment, undoubtedly uh, regrets that moment as well, and is is unnerved and unbalanced by what transformed out of all that. Um, not excusable behavior by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, extraordinary in this situation. Chase, what do you think? Yeah, I think this illustrates a, a lifetime of feeling like a person's lacking control. And anytime uh, feelings of lacking control build up, they will always, always self-correct in one way or another. And it's always based on a person's self-control and self-worth. And here's one main thing that you can take home tonight from a behavior profiler's perspective. There is a there is zero connection between net worth and self-worth and we see suffering in hollywood as much as we do anywhere else greg yeah chase exactly one of the things i would make a point people are people are people yeah you may have a lot of money it doesn't change anything your dog doesn't you have a lot of money that's the way it works and so when a person is dealing with whatever emotion whatever kind of thing is going on they're still going to have the same kind of responses you do fight or flight now actors can learn to portray that but if he's acting here, he's doing a hell of a job acting. Because what we saw, to me, is a person who exhibits all the behaviors of that thinking brain turning off and that responsive brain going up there. We saw the rigid movement. We saw maybe even him at the last minute making a bad decision, turning around, sitting down, and still so spun up based on the trigger event that he was still shouting and screaming and all of that. That shows us that he's not thinking rationally. He's behaving. And now we're talking about cat brain versus monkey brain. Now they're in that cat brain and they're responding. Last thing I'll leave you with is if somebody walks up to you, watch their shoulders. Pre-violence, I don't care what kind of violence they're going to do. They have to move their shoulders to lift their feet or use their hands. That's it for me. Scott, what do you got? All right. I think this is a great example of one extreme to the other. Someone who is out of control and someone who is in control. Will Smith loses control. He goes up and I think the last second there he decides he's going to smack him goes really bad for him and Chris Rock looks like a champ 
This uh, Will Smith has ruined a lot of things for himself with that. His reputation, part of his film career, I'm sure. And then whereas Chris Rock has only been elevated by that. So taking the high road was the toughest thing to do. And I hate taking the high road. It's always so hard. But apparently that's the right thing to do. Once again, history shows. So I think that's a great example of the someone losing control and someone keeping control. And what happens when, when those two come together? I think it's a fantastic example of that. All right, fellas, I think this was a good one, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you. Sí, no, 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 no,